to others as you'd have them do unto you and have a brighter by and by Lord dear Lord above God Almighty God of love please look down and see God of love, please look down and see my people through. It is a wonderful day. Pentecost, and we have a wonderful celebration as Megan McKenzie and Nolan will be confirmed today and affirm their faith along with us in the congregation. So it is a great day. And as every great day must have, we have cupcakes following service. So please stay on the patio and have some cupcakes uh, with us. Uh, at the earlier service, we had two of our high school graduates, and they received their quillows. Those are quilts that fold into pillows, and they're made for each of the graduates very specifically. On the quillows are everything from where they're graduating from to where they're going and Bible verses and passages. And so we had two of those this morning as we continue to celebrate the spirit at work among us. Other things happening. We have lots of cereal and beans and rice, but for a whole community, we can use more. So we have one more week. If you have not uh, had an opportunity to bring in rice and beans and cereal, please do so. Look, it brings life. Oh, Bernie, did I take that from you? I, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we have one more week outside. Uh, that outside group, they like to be outside, but we have one more week outside, and then they are going to have to come in because it's getting warmer and warmer every day. On the, on the slideshow, it said we're hiking on June 2nd. We are. June 2nd is not a Saturday. It is a Wednesday at 5 a.m., but if you work, you know, you probably can do that and still get to work. It's about an hour and a half hike. 
It's going to be great. All right, or not. Okay. There'll be many of us out there. Where's Mike? Right? We're out there. Going out there? Yep. There'll be none of us out there. Um, what else do I have? Vacation Bible School is June 27th, 28th, and 29th. And there are registration forms outside on the tables. You can grab one, give one to a neighbor, give one to a friend, give one to a grandchild. Um, share those. You can also register online as well. So if you'd like to do it that way, that would be great, too. That will be up very soon, if not yet. And our homeless program is looking for some cases of water. So if you're at the store and would like to pick up a case of water, that would be great. That will really help us out in this hot weather that we can fund them with water in hand. I think I've gotten all the announcements, yes? Then I invite you to stand as we give thanks for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that deep our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgive us. Send us as companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, fill our hearts with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Savior, Spirit, always with us. Glory, alleluia. Father, Son, and Spirit. Glory, alleluia. Glory, alleluia. Almighty God, creator of the world. O oh, gracious God, composer of our greatest song. O oh, loving God, you sent your only Son to save our world. Creator, Savior, Spirit, always with us. Glory, alleluia. Father, Son, and Spirit. Glory, alleluia. Glory, alleluia. O oh, gentle Christ, your love is in our hearts. O oh, caring Christ, your love gave us everlasting life. O oh, Jesus Christ, you sent your Holy Spirit to heal our souls. Creator, Savior, Spirit, always with us. Glory, alleluia. Father, Son, and Spirit, glory, alleluia. Glory, alleluia. O oh, Holy Spirit, you are in our hearts. O oh, Holy Spirit, help us spread Christ's kindness. O oh, Holy Spirit, fill our minds full of God's holy word. Creator, Savior, Spirit, always with us. Glory, alleluia. Father, Son, and Spirit, glory, alleluia. Glory, alleluia. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Now also. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way For peace in the world, for the health of the church, for the unity of all. 
For this holy house, for all who worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. That we may live out your impassioned response to the hungry and the poor. That we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie on every day. Glory to God in the highest, the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you Glory. Glory to God in the highest, the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand the Father, receive our prayer. Glory to God in the highest, the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father, Amen, Amen, Amen. Glory to God in the highest, the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Glory to God in the highest, the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Be with you. Let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send this spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our readings. The first reading is from Acts. When the day of the Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now they were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one of them had heard them speaking in their native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are you not all who are speaking Galilean? And how is that? We hear each of us in our own native language, Parthenians, Medas, Amalites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontius, and Asia, Parthians. 
Pamphylia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Kyrene, and the visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretanians and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But all others were sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet of Joel. In the last days, it will be God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and all your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Psalm 104. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There go the ships to and from, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. Sport of it. You give it to them. They gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. You look at the earth, and it trembles. You touch the mountains, and they smoke. May these words of mine please God. I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Second reading, Romans 8. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But, we, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what it is is the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God word of God word of life Gospel according to John. Glory Glory to Lord. Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, 
whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father. He will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I do not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak of his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Compromise. It has been a long day coming. Some of you three and four years, right? But it began here in the waters of baptism, when you were claimed and you were named and you were made a child of God. And your parents promises, promised to do things. Do you remember what they promised? You were kind of little then, right? But you've seen a few baptisms since then. I know you have, right? They promised to bring you to the church and put in your hands the Holy Scripture, teach you the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments and teach you to work for justice and peace in all the earth. You've heard those things before? Yes. Now, by bringing them, you to confirmation, they were fulfilling part of those responsibilities because you were taught the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Ten Commandments, right? You were taught all those things. And it has been a journey that we have all enjoyed. I know Lewis and I really have enjoyed being with you over these years. But now... It is time for you to take more responsibility with your own faith. Don't worry, your parents aren't leaving you. You're not independent yet. They still may tell you it's time to wake up and come to church, right? Yes? Yes. Because this is not graduation. This is commencement, maybe. Right? We, at this earlier today, we had those quilts that wrapped around our seniors, and they had a graduation. But I told them it was just the beginning of a whole new life, because the spirit is alive and well and has not left, did not leave you from the waters of baptism, continues to be with you and share that with you. So as we read in Acts, we heard again from the Gospel of Luke, what comes out to be somewhat seems like almost a picture from Hollywood, right? You can almost see it, and maybe some of you have seen a movie that has all of this, right? The disciples are gathered in the upper room, or at least some room, as it says, and they're waiting for the consummation of Jesus' promise of the Holy Spirit. And the earth shakes, right? And the wind blows, tongues descend, and they are emboldened to preach the gospel. First in Jerusalem, and then it says, to the ends of the earth. In other words, it's kind of a dramatic scene, and if it were any other Hollywood movie, they would live happily ever after. But that's not what happens in our story. It's not about living happily ever after. The disciples go on to struggle, to face persecution. Overwhelming majority eventually endure martyrdom. So it's not quite the happy ending that they were thinking about. And as for solving the problems, it seems that the Holy Spirit has only created more. They were commissioned and they were equipped to go and share the good news. They could have instead just savored where they were, right? Stayed in that upper room, 
had a few good meals, think about their time with Jesus and remember the promises. But that's not what they were called to do. They were called to go out and preach. And thousands of people responded, but never without a cost. So why should we expect anything different? Why, that is, should we expect that the Holy Spirit to bring anything more than challenges and opportunities that, while significant, are nevertheless not without cost? You know from studying Martin Luther, right, our confirmants, we spend a couple weeks doing that, you knew about how he struggled as well. In fact, so much so that when he revised the traditional marks of the church that he inherited from the Catholic Church, some of you may know, Word, baptism, Holy Spirit, discipline, biblical offices, worship, he added suffering. Now, if you were about the work of the gospel, he reasoned, you were going to experience some resistance. And in fact, when we confess our faith today, all of us will say, will you, do you renounce the devil and all his empty promises? Which I think our confirmants need to hear this day. That the life in Christ does not always bring happiness. That when we live this life, we may experience some resistance. You see, the Spirit doesn't solve all our problems, but invites us to see possibilities we would not have seen otherwise. Rather than remove our fear, the Spirit grants us courage to move forward. Rather than promise safety, the Spirit promises God's presence. Rather than remove us from this turbulent world or even settle the turbulence, the Spirit enables us to keep our footing when there are tremors. Keep in mind the Spirit is given to Jesus at baptism. Remember that? Confirmance, nod, yes. And what happens after that? He's immediately sent out into the wilderness. The same Spirit, like I said at the outset, I know this, and yet sometimes I just forget. Or at least I yearn for something just a little bit simpler and a little more reliable. And so I work, and I plan, and I pray, and I strive not to avoid challenges, but rather to overcome them, hoping that when I've addressed the major challenges in front of me, whether personal or professional or us as a congregation or whatever, then I will encounter some smooth sailing. But that doesn't seem to be how the Spirit always works. There's a biography about Paul Farmer. He is about a, he's a doctor, who is, could just be standing in the United States doing a simple, small practice, everything going fine. But instead, he was convicted and felt a need to address infectious diseases around the world. So instead of just staying in one place, he went to Haiti and Peru and Cuba and Russia and more. Dr. Farmer persisted, always seeing some measure of success among challenges and possibilities. And so when the book was titled, they chose a Haitian proverb. It was called Mountains Beyond Mountains. So compliments, be careful. The spirit is going to move you. The Spirit is going to stir things up in you to continue to go God's will and God's work. God sent us people, we know this during COVID, because God sent us people like Steve and Charles, right? And Zeke and Tony and Nolan and Kelsey to help us get through the pandemic in order that we could live stream. Was it an easy process? No. Did it bring me joy and happiness and comfort? No, maybe Steve. Steve was like all about it. <laughs> Absolutely not. But the Spirit was moving and enabling us and prodding us to move forward for at least me. I went kicking and screaming. To be on honest, the online services were things we had talked about before. And now because of the movement of the Holy Spirit, it is here for good. When we were presented with an opening, when presented with an opportunity to host those who are experiencing homelessness for the first time here at Holy Trinity now years ago. There was worry. There was concern. But the Spirit moved us to welcome our neighbor. And boy, have we been blessed because of it. 
but it wasn't easy. So I wonder as we move past the, or into post-pandemic, I wonder what the Holy Spirit is up to. How is the Spirit moving us to do God's work? What does it mean to have an online presence? What does it mean to minister to people when they may never physically be in the building, but only online? What other ministries is the Spirit moving us to? Well, we might experience struggle when the Holy Spirit moves us. Perhaps the good news is that the Holy Spirit continues to help us provide possibilities where others might only see problems. Maybe the Spirit here to grant us strength and energy to climb those mountains beyond mountains with equal measures of confidence and joy to benefit those around us. So compromise. As we continue to hear and feel the wind blowing, may we not fear that movement, but move with the wind in order that we may all see possibilities in front of us. Not to shy away, but know that the Spirit is at work. Amen. So our confirmands, I invite you forward, just all three of you together. We're going to support one another. So they have uh, written faith statements. You can bring those with you, if you'd like, unless you've memorized it. Good? Okay. Come on forward. And they have made stoles. And they've talked about their spiritual gifts on their stoles and how God will use them and the gifts that God has given them to continue to do God's work here and or in the world. And so I invite you to read your faith statements. I was trying to get this to go up, but I forgot my tail fell back, which is, you're okay. And then talk about what your gifts are on your souls. And let me give you a mic. Hello, my name is Nolan Couch. I'm an eighth grader at Payne Junior High. Going to be a take fresh. Your mask off. We'll okay. be able to hear you better. I think. I'm going to be a freshman at Perry Junior High School yes, next year. Some of my hobbies are running track and playing golf. I also like to ride my mountain bike and ride my scooter. I grew up at St. Luke Lutheran Church in Portland, Oregon, and moved here last year. I have memories of Sunday school and singing in the Christmas program at St. Luke. I went on multiple confirmation retreats and went in more depth in like subjects like Bible, small catechism, the creed, and baptism. I also went to church camp that helped me through my faith journey. My spiritual gifts are service and craftsmanship. I have done service projects like community table, which is making food boxes, making blankets. I've done the soundboard here and making hand sanitizer. My favorite Bible verse is Ephesians 6.13, Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after everything, to stand. This is my favorite Bible verse because it relates with me doing sports and God protecting me. Thank you, everything, everybody that supported me through my faith journey, and Jonathan, Pastor Beth, my mom, and all my Trout Creek Bible camp counselors. I hope I can stay with this church for a long time and continue my faith journey. I hope to make an impact on this church for a long time. Hi, my name is Mackenzie Markaida. I am 14 years old and a freshman at Williamsfield High School. I was baptized here at Holy Trinity when I was just a baby and continued my faith journey from there. I obviously can't remember all my memories considering I was so young, but some memories have managed to stick around. I remember going to the Halloween carnivals and playing all the games while being dressed up in a costume. I especially remember going to the summer camps because I had so much fun. I loved singing and dancing to the different songs and collecting a new keychain every day that had a different animal on it. I remember going to Sunday school every Sunday and, of course, starting confirmation. As I grew up in the church, my faith in God has grown as well. My most favorite Bible verse is Philippines 4.13. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I pretty much live by this verse because it reminds me that no matter the circumstances, God will provide my needs to overcome anything. The only thing we can control in our lives is our faith and trust in God, and we just need to trust him in his plan for our lives. Thank you to everyone who has helped me through this journey. I hope that I will continue to grow in faith and achieve my goals as I grow on with my life. 
The best is yet to come. Hello, my name is Megan Rasmussen and I am an 8th grader at Santan Junior High. My faith journey began when I was baptized and started attending church here at Holy Trinity. Some of my favorite church memories were attending VBS and Sunday school with the Heaths and going to camp formation. I'm continuing my faith through getting conf confirmed and continuing to be a good leader throughout my life. My favorite Bible verse is, the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these, Mark 12, 31. Thank you to everyone who has been with me throughout my faith journey. Stand over here, don't go anywhere. This is the part you guys have been waiting for. No? Oh. You may be seated. Please. Sorry. and stand at the rail. The conference would be right at the rail and their families stand behind them. You have been with them from the beginning of their faith journey as you brought them to the font. And we can spread out too so everybody can. <laughs> All right. And then we'll send Nolan down there. All right. You can come down over. It's all good. Same conference. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these young people, one with us in the body of Christ, who are making public affirmation of their faith. I present Nolan, Mackenzie, and Megan, who desire to make public profession affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brother whom you have made your own by water and the word and baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlighten them with the gifts of your Holy Spirit, and nourish them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. We invite the congregation to stand. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that re rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, I renounce, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and was buried. He descended into dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into the heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again as the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. You have made public profession of your faith. And as we, I ask you this, I want you to say, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. You have made the public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant of God made with you in, the ho in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. To hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through the word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support the sisters and brother and pray for them in their life in Christ? We do, and we, and we ask, ask God, God to help and, and guide, guide us. I invite the compromands to kneel. If you will kneel, and if you will stand behind and lay hands. And yep. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Megan the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Stir up in Mackenzie the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Stir up in Nolan the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in your people the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may stand up. We'll kind of note the compliments. You can remain seated. And if you will face the congregation. Congratulations. <laughs> and of course, there's this. Yeah. And as I said, there are cupcakes and to celebrate, and you can ask them about their stoles. You can take some time and look at their stoles. Please stand. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Gracious God, you give the Holy Spirit to your church, filling it with many and variety gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthen us in our visioning and dreaming that it may discover a new spirit's creative work. Stir up your spirit in our confirmants, Mackenzie, Megan, Nolan, as they affirmed their faith today. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of life, we give thanks for all those who are graduating from college, high school, middle school, and elementary school. Guide them as they make transitions to new schools in the workplace. We pray especially for our high school graduates, Connor, Andra. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of the nations, 
At the sound of the rushing wind, people speak, speaking in different languages proclaim and heard together your deed of power. Fill the leaders of nations with your Holy Spirit so that they exercise your gracious will in the lives of people. Be especially with those in the Middle East. May they find peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people, even inside of your hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Restore to wholeness all who are in need this day, especially for Mike, Sandy, Margie, Sandra, and all those we name before you now, either silently or aloud. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of love, feel Holy Trinity with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. Renew our ministry, heal our divisions, and open us to the needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of hope, those who have died in you raise their eternal song of praise. We especially, we give you thanks for the many gifts of your people and rejoice in the witness of your saints. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, you guys just waking up? Yes, hi. This is the sign of the Holy Spirit here working, right? That's right. So today, there's exciting things happening, right? In the morning, you guys don't know, but how many of you are going to a different grade next year? Right? How many of us are starting school for the first time or a job? How many of you are getting a job next year? No, not yet? Did you know, though, that the Holy Spirit lives in us and through other people? And there's something that Pastor Chris said that always sticks with me when we talk about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our guide. And we heard that, too, right? When we heard our confirmants and when we heard our graduates. Is this it? Is this the end of the Holy Spirit working for us and for the confirmants? Confirmants, are you guys done? No, it's the beginning so how does the Holy Spirit guide us? How do you guys think the Holy Spirit guides us? Does anybody know? Yeah, with love. Are you guys awake this morning and here? Yeah. That's this Holy Spirit telling your parents to get you out of bed to come to church. Amen? All right. So remember that as we are finishing some of our milestones, even the littles, right? Learning how to take steps, learning how to use the bathroom on their own. Isn't that amazing? You guys don't remember any of that. Yeah. But we all have different things that we need guidance, right? Big or small. Okay, repeat after me. Jesus, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for lighting that light inside of us to go and share the good news. Thank you for confirmation, for school and teachers, our pastors, and all those people who guide us. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen.
We thank you for your generosity, a generosity that makes a difference in the world, makes a difference in our community, and for that we are most grateful. Let us pray together. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection with earth and sea and all their creatures and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh, 
the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Fire and smoke Every time I 